Hello, this is Eileen, the environmental educator, and uh, it's Friday. That's right. It's Friday, and we got Michelle Obama just shaking her head at you. And who is that to? Oh, oh, I know. It's to her buddy uh, right here, Mr. Al Gore, who um, has been out at Davos this week at the World Economic Forum. And um, let, let's just hear what Al Gore has summarized what the environmental movement has done for the four decades as they introduced him, that he's been leading it. But we are still failing badly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We are still failing badly. Yeah, yeah. E even Joe is like right there with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been holding up the solutions the world needs too. But it's really not funny because the world really needs solutions and the world is suffering. Okay, we we go through this. 50% uh, of the waters in America are too polluted to fish, swim, or drink out of, okay, from all of the toxins and chemicals and stuff that we, you know, do every day. And, and a lot of that is our disposable society. And, and a lot of it would be, you know, if we just used hemp <laughs> right there, we, we would solve problems. Have you ever heard Gore talk about that? No. Why is that? Uh, because Gore has been refusing it since um, November, shortly after November 93. So I was just through this again recently, but here's a 95 letter from uh, Bill Mason, the director of correspondence. And <laughs> why are you bothering me, Eileen? You know, just go away. And then it took meeting Joe Kennedy. And um, a few years later, in 98, in January, I, I met Joe Kennedy, who got my work passed. Um, Al subordinate staff and you know Gore this is what he said uh, for my part I fully intend to keep my focus on continuing the solid record of achievement that has characterized this administration since we first took office and I told him Al if you don't do the solutions the world needs that's you are going to be screaming louder and louder and louder for more desperately needed solutions OK. And what are we doing now? Oh, oh, exactly that. But, you know, in 99, yeah, he's impressed with my hard work right, and commitment to the ideas. <laughs> but, you know, thank you for keeping this me informed of your efforts and bringing this proposal to my attention. Proposal to end global environmental illiteracy and our disposable society since 93. OK. Gain individual cooperation because that is the solution. Leadership by example. Um, uh, how many, four, five hundred private jets over there at Davos? Okay, telling us, Peter, people that are holding up solutions, telling us we have to finally act now. Okay, you ever hear them talking about hemp? No, and you never will. Why? Because it would solve our problems, and they just won't allow solutions. That's right, and and that's proven by Gore for, from these letters here. OK, and then we went through this the other night. Yeah, when I took them in Sundance, because you know what? In addition to the solutions that Gore and um, Sundance and Redford and the NRDC and the UN since November 93 and everybody since them has refused. They have also refused the solutions movie. Said I asked Gore and then I was like, who else would help? Well, Redford and Sundance, of course. OK, they've been refusing the solutions movie since before a decade before Gore's first movie, Screaming for Solutions, and his second one that Redford and Sundance, of course, participated in Gore's fraud and gave him a platform knowing full well they admitted in this injunction hearing by not by not countering any like mate. Any statement I made or anything I presented as, yeah, they've been preventing the solutions and and the the solutions movie and the solutions the world needs. And, and so that means in court, you admit that that is true if you don't rebut it. OK, and so Sundance admitted it, but they still showed Gore's second movie. That's right. Right. And, and then Gore's office. Right. And, you know, he, they're unable to assist. In the request of actually getting solutions out there, 
Right. <laughs> and to stop bothering them. Yes, please consider taking action that can be of use as opposed to sending pointless emails. Right. Actions of use. Everything Gore has refused because Gore is not going to do it. No, but what does Gore do? Oh, that's right. Uh, let's, let's look at some re tax returns from um, his uh, Alliance for Climate Protection, the Climate Reality Project. Okay. Oh, that's right. Okay. In the current year, they took in uh, 18 million. The year prior to that, 26 million. Okay. How much is Al Gore robbing you by? And you know what that isn't? That isn't funny. Even even that thing right there knows that's not funny. Okay? This is absolute this is absolute ridiculousness. So let's take a listen to Gore. Okay, so let's listen to this. I'm, when climate activists around the world, and I'm partly speaking for them right here on this stage, have come to the conclusion that the people in authority are not doing their job. Who who is more in authority of the the climate movement than Al Gore. Yeah, Al Gore is talking about himself here. He's blaming everybody else. Al Gore is not doing his job. Al Gore has not done his job since shortly after November of 93. And as proven in these letters and these correspondence, Al Gore is absolutely adamantly opposed to doing his job. Okay, but, but, Al Gore does not mind taking your money. That's right. He does not. Let's listen to some more. Okay, so first, uh, this video is titled, We're Failing Badly. Okay? And, and so listen, now it's all the oil companies fault. Young people around the world are looking at what we're doing, they look at the World Bank and they say, oh, you've got a climate denier in charge of the World Bank, so why are you surprised that the World Bank is completely failing to do its job? Secretary General says that, everybody knows the World Bank is failing badly. Now we have the COP process. Okay, what do I say to these young activists that I train around the world when they come to me and they say, are you okay with putting the the CEO of one of the largest oil companies in the world in as the president of the COP? Is that really okay? Well, it's not whether he's a nice guy or not or whether he's intelligent. The appearance of a conflict of interest undermines confidence at a time when climate activists around the world, and I'm partly speaking for them right here on this stage, have come to the conclusion that the people in authority are not doing their job. There's a lot of Blah, 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 as Greta says. There are a lot of words and there are some meaningful commitments, but we are still failing badly. We need to have a supermajority process instead of unanimity in the COP. We cannot let the oil companies and gas companies and petro states tell us what is permissible. In the last COP, we were not allowed to even discuss scaling down oil and gas. Can't discuss it. A lot of the NDCs weren't even called for. Are we going to be able to discuss phase, uh, scaling down oil and gas in the next COP? Or, or, do, or putting the oil industry in charge of the COP? Is that going to tell young people around the world, we've just decided to uh, not even disguise it anymore? And l let me finish with this point on the, on the industry. Okay, so you know it's not disguising it anymore. It, it, well, Al Gore, you, you know, and if only Project Veritas would do their job. But, um, you know, it's, it's the oil industry's job because, because they're leading. It, it isn't Al Gore's job because he hasn't gotten us off of oil and onto hemp or ending our disposable society, which uses so much oil so that we, you know, in a lot of respects, make the oil industry irrelevant. No, 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 no. That could not possibly be it. No, no. It's the World Bank's problem. It's everybody's problem except the people who aren't doing their job. And what Al Gore isn't telling you is the people not doing their job is Al Gore. And if Project Veritas would tell you this, um, the whole world would know it. And, and none of us would be listening to Gore. OK, and we might actually get on real solutions. But, uh, yeah, if you've watched plenty of my videos, you know that Project Veritas, regardless of many fraudulent statements they make, will not 
expose everybody. They are giving the entire fraudulent environmental industry a pass. But if Project Veritas would do their job, that's right. Uh, this man here would would be exposed. We we would we would absolutely know that he is a global fraud who, who just robs people, and he he does not mind spending your money. You know we uh, tend to emphasize the the bad news, and th there is unfortunately a lot of it. But there's a lot of good news as well, and and I just want to cover some of it. In my country, we passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which is primarily a climate uh, act, $369 billion, which will actually be much larger than that because the heavy lifting is done by tax credits that uh, are very long-term, some of them actually open-ended, uh, and the early investments that have already been triggered by it uh, give a great deal of reason, uh, many reasons for b believing it's going to be much larger than 369 billion. So I'm very encouraged by that. Secondly, and Andrew's yeah, he's very encouraged by by way more than 369 billion to what bring climate police to your front door, to bring tyranny to your door, okay, as opposed to actual real solutions that if Gore had allowed since 93, we wouldn't have stages talking about environmental problems anymore because they would be solved. But yes, Gore can sum up the actual end result of his decades of negative, 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 negative results year after year after year after year. And yet he, he still is thought of promoted as, as if he's grand and a savior. But we are still failing badly. That's right. We are still failing badly because this man and everyone that he associates himself with absolutely, positively will not give you environmental solutions since shortly after November 93. Even right there, shaking her head at it, her head, his head, whatever, whatever. For right there, this man is like right there with you, because this, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, partnership, let, let's call it, is um, a, as opposed to solutions as Gore, even though they won't tell you that. So it's a Friday funny, and, and this is just absolutely horrendous. And yes, of course, as always, if Project Veritas would do their job, <laughs> this this wouldn't be a situation anymore. We'd actually just be getting on solutions. But here we are shaking our head at this absolute horrendousness. Did, did Core fly in uh, on one of those four or 500 private jets? <laughs> Probably. Okay, people, stay tuned.